Hello, Amy McCants, Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up! here with you on Ready Aim Stamp. Today we're going to make this beautiful buckle card. It was inspired by a buckle card I saw made by Lynn Dunn. It's very simple and yet beautiful. We are going to use the Celebration Stamp Set Happy Birthday to You, as well as the Coordinating Dies. And I'm going to use the flower out of the Piper Pumpkin set that was for February of 2020, a lovely day, because it was made to coordinate with the Happy Birthday to You set. We are going to need a piece of Coastal Cabana cardstock cut at eight and a half by four and a half, scored at five and a half. We will need a smaller piece of Coastal Cabana that is our buckle piece, and it is going to be cut at four and a half by two with a score at one inch. Our sentiment piece is going to be out of Whisper White, and it is cut at four inches by two and a quarter inches. And then this is going to be our DSP piece that we're going to make ourselves. It is Whisper White cut at four by two and three quarters inches. Then I have a couple of pieces about four by four each, and they are going to be used with the die set of this. Whenever I get a new die set that I think I'm going to use a lot or that has um, some images that might be more difficult to um to set up and line up, I like to make a little template that I can use with my Stamparatus. And so I'm going to do that with you first. All right, I am gonna just place my four by four piece of white cardstock in there in the Stamparatus, and I am going to try to get as straight as I think possible my birthday cake or wedding cake or bridal shower or just any kind of cake it really could be a, any kind of celebration and then I am going to use my memento tuxedo black and then I'm just gonna stamp up this image and I am going to stamp it on sorry try to get it in the same position on both of these papers because for one of them, I am going to cut out the outline of the whole birthday cake with flowers. And the other one is going to be my template for the die set that is just the flowers. It helps give us a little 3D effect. Again, stamping that image. And now I'll be able to line it up here. Whoops, magnetic. So I'm going to move the Stamparatus for a moment. And I'm going to line these up so that I can cut them out and have a little template. And then if I'm going to be making multiple images stamping multiple images making you know several cards of the same or any reason at all i have that lined up and it'll be easy to line up with the cake again so i'm just using the post-it notes because i know it won't stick to my um, cardstock permanently it won't rip it away you can use washi tape you can use some um, painter's tape you just don't you want to be low tack so that it doesn't rip your paper to shreds as you're pulling it away all right so now i have my flowers and I have my template, and I'll show you in a moment how I use those. So now I'm going to get my birthday cake ready. And I just store these little 
templates in my pouch with the um, with the dies is in there right where I know I'm gonna need them all right I'm gonna take that over to the big shot and I'm gonna cut it Now I have the birthday cake image cut out. And if I were doing multiple, I would just run some more whisper white paper through the big shot. And I would have these blanks. And then I'll show you. Once again, with the Stamparatus, this is one of the joys of having the Stamparatus that you can do this method. So if I didn't like how my cake had lined up, maybe I thought it was too close. There's another trick that I can do. I can stamp my cake down onto this grid paper that was made especially for the Stamparatus. And then I can line it up to how I want it. And my little guide is kind of in the way. And I can just magnet or tape down this outline. I can place my blank in here. And and once again, ink up that stamp. And get my image on here. Now this is the bottom layer of our cake. So if this flower isn't too dark, that's okay. Because it's going to be covered up anyway. So I'm not going to worry about re-inking that. If it was my top layer, I might want to go and re-ink that a little bit. So then I'm going to remove that template. And I'm going to place this one, line it up. See, it lines up pretty nicely. I like how I had that one. And you can just put these in. If you're doing multiple cards for like a bridal shower, a birthday party invitation, or any other reason, the, this is a great way to quickly get all those little pieces and make sure that they're lining up the way you want them to without having to tape them down a lot. And I didn't ink up this whole stamp because all I want are those flower images to come through clear. And voila. There are those. Now on this card, I had gone ahead and I had stamped again and made a third layer. I'm not going to do that this time, but you can see that you can do that. And I ended up just fussy cutting with my scissors this flower out to add a little extra dimension. Okay, I'm going to move the Stamparatus out of the way. And we have those pieces ready for us. Now for our custom designer series paper using this beautiful flower. I'm actually going to move some of these even further out of the way. And I'm going to take that piece of grid paper and I'm going to place it under here. I'm gonna, what I'm going to use is the clear embossing powder. And I am going to emboss this rose. So first I'm going to use my embossing buddy to help remove oils so that the embossing powder doesn't stick where I don't want it. And I'm going to use the Versamark pad. Because the Versamark pad is the one you want to use with embossing. It gives you 
a nice wet ink that that embossing powder will stick to. And I'm gonna stamp this a couple of times on this paper. And just kind of put some pressure. You can kind of very faintly see where you stamped to know not to stamp over in that same spot. And then I'm going to just turn my stamp and then I'm going to boss down. And I'm going to move it into this little tray that helps me keep my embossing powder safe and gather it back up again. I'm just going to sprinkle a bunch on there. And you can see where the embossing powder is on there. And just one moment. All right, so now I have the powder and I'm going to take my just cardboard that has been covered in aluminum foil and I'm going to start up my um, um, heat gun. It's going to be a little bit loud. I'm going to let it run just for a little bit to get it heated up. And switch hands. Sorry about that. And now I'm going to heat up that embossing powder. And soon you'll see it start to change. Oh, there it is. And just melt. So now you can only see it if you're like the light is shining on it really well. But that is exactly what I want. So now we're going to take the Coastal Cabana ink pad and a chunk of the Stampin' Sponges. Come three in a pack and I just snip them apart so that I have lots that I can use for different colors and I'm going to gather up some ink and you can check it here to see if you have too much maybe you want it really dark and I'm just gonna start sponging that ink and you can see that it's resisting where we heat emboss that clear powder and that's keeping it as a nice white image. I love the way that that looks. And that we can make it coordinate with the rest of our project so easily. Try to kind of even it out or not. Some people might like the look of it having just some kind of darker shadowy spots and opposed to lighter spots. It just really makes that clear embossing on the white just pop really nicely, I think. Definitely want to have a piece of scratch paper down below to keep your surface clean. All right, so I'm going to set this aside and let it kind of dry a little bit. And while it does that, I am going to color the flowers and the cake with my Stampin' Blend markers. And I am going to use light crumb cake for the cake color the frosting. I'm going to use light pool party for the um, cake stand to kind of give it that sea glass look. The leaves are going to be a light old olive and then the flowers are going to be shaded with light pumpkin pie and 
light calypso coral. So I am going to color this and then I'll speed it up because I don't want you to be bored watching me color. I am going to color kind of where I see that the cake would be on this around the edges. Just you don't have to. This is just something I like to do. Just makes me feel like it flows a little bit nicer when it's put all together. So I'm going to do that. And before I finish doing that and do fast forward, I am going to just color around the edges of these flowers. I don't need to color the middles because they're going to be covered up. But when you look at this card from an angle, you can see a little bit of that layer underneath. So I prefer to kind of color underneath it. You don't have to, that is purely your choice. All right, so I am gonna resume coloring and I will fast forward so you don't have to just be bored with my Stampin' Blends coloring. All right, I have those colored. And as you can see, it's gonna just pop up on there with some dimensionals and cover up what we did not color. So now we have our inside piece as well as our outside piece that is going to cover the little slot where our buckle goes. So then we're just going to work on stamping our buckle with the word celebrate and then we're going to stamp our sentiment on the inside and then we'll be ready to assemble. Okay so for the inside on this one, I am going to add the word lovely and I'm just lining it up with the grids to kind of line it up straight with my block on my grid paper. This is my little sentiment piece for the inside of the card. And I'm going to get Coastal Cabana. Just gently tap that on there. When you're using one of these um, photopolymer stamps it is a good idea it may not stamp great because I'm not using a cushion under it just that piece of paper it's a good idea especially if you're having an image to have a little bit of cushion under it and the Stamparatus has that little pad oh that looks good now this stamp set you'll see says to you so I am going to just use a little piece of tape and I'm going to mask off the words two. I'm going to ink it up. I'm going to kind of wipe a little bit of this off the edge. I'm going to remove that tape. Otherwise, it does me no good to mask it off. And just line up and stamp it down. All right. And then on the buckle, I'm going to reinforce that burnish that fold and I'm going to get the word celebrate which is from the happy birthday tea who said and I'm going to ink it up in the coastal cabana and I'm going to get it kind of close to this edge and lovely now all of our stamping and coloring is done and we are ready to assemble. So we need to, to score and burnish our card base. All right, and it's gonna go this direction. So on the side of this buckle, on this side, we're gonna put some adhesive and I'm gonna use the multi-purpose glue. You could use Snail Runner or um, even the um, tape. I can't remember what it's called, sorry. And I'm just going to splinter it pretty much the best I can. Another reason to use the, the multi-glue because it gives you that wiggle room. 
And then this is going to get adhered to the card base here, the opposite side of the fold on there. So I'm going to get some more glue. And I'm just going to line it up. Glad to have my wiggle room. And then I'm going to put the also glue on the back of my sentiment and where I'm going to put their name and my. And it's going to come over here and there's going to be a little bit of space in between those two. Give it a little border. There, our inside is complete and it's ready. So now to make this easier on myself, we're going to make the slot with this banner punch and to make it easier to line up so I don't have to fight with paper, I am going to just kind of straighten this out and I'm going to make a couple of little lines. I want it to have a little bit of room where it's going to go under and that's just going to tell me where to punch this banner out and how to line it up. And I can look, kind of see if I'm somewhat even on both sides to see if I'm straight. I'm going to punch that out, and later I could use that for another card. And that's where our little buckle part comes into play. And then we're going to hide that with our cake. And... So I just need to know where to stick my um, stamp and dimensionals because I don't want to interfere with that buckle. So I'm going to put one down here. Let's see if I put it here. And I can put one here and here. Maybe one in this very top corner. And you could come this way a little bit. That's what I did on the other one. And then I would be able to do one in this top corner. And being careful not to get that. Oops. Don't quite want that right there because I want to hide there, I think. It kind of shows a little bit, but it's hidden for the most part. And now for the pretty flowers on top, we're going to put some dimensionals on there. And, oh, it just looks so nice. There we are. Celebrate lovely you. It could be graduation, birthday, retirement, um, a new job, wedding, bridal shower, any of those wonderful things, or just because. All right. Thank you for joining me for a segment of a Ready Aim Stamp. I will try to include a link to the products below that I used. Thank you so much.